<laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm talking about castles. So this is a castle. Um, this is not, <laughs> however, the castle we will be talking about. This is a classic medieval ca castle. Um, the castles that we are talking about are these storage things for a program called Homesick. This is also a castle, by the way. This is a GitHub repo. This is my castle. Yeah. Um, so Homesick is this really cool utility that is a gem for Ruby. It makes it an easier way for version controlling your config files, your dot files, and other things below them. Um, it uses git slash github, um, and it integrates pull submodule inits and submodule pulls and updates into singular commands and stuff like that. Um, you can also have multiple castles in one time, so you can have re uh, dot files for different parts of your system in different castles, and then collect them all together, or have them in separate parts. And you can easily switch between them, so you can swap out one castle for another castle, and swap out all your siblings. So creating a castle is actually pretty easy. Say you got a ton of dot files in your home directory, and you want to create a castle out of it, and then use that castle. You create a GitHub repo, you generate, you say homesick generate, and then the name of the repo, or the directory in which your repo will be. You go into your repo directory, and then you just add the remote for your GitHub remote, uh, repo, and you push it to GitHub. And then suddenly your castle is stored in GitHub, and you can just, and then you can do cloning a castle where you homesick clone your repo and then you symlink it, and you'll overwrite the files, but since they'll be symlinked to the same files that they are, it shouldn't be a problem. So, it's time for a demo. I'm going to do a demo. I actually have a uh, symbolic... Wait, that's as far as that. Okay, that's okay. We can do this. Right. Um, I have a user I just created on my server, and nothing in there. So, I... I well. Waffle! I cannot see what is going on, by the way. I can read that. Oh, wait, can we... We can enlarge text, can't we? I think that's a thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. Technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, wait. It is alright. Uh, no idea what to do. No, okay, no this is dev. Okay. Five. Okay. Six. One. Zero. Dot. Student. Wait, we can hear the displays. That's okay. 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 So, um, Z. I have never logged into this, but I, I just logged into it. Um. <laughs> project called Sane Defaults, which is a homesick repo, um, that has some okay uh, default.conf files, and I'll just clone that and show you how it works. So, copying link, I'm going over here and I say homesick clone. You just spelled homesick. I did. <laughs> Did I not type? Oh, I, I typed homesick clone and did not type in your alt. <coughs> okay, so it clones and then it says, okay, yay, we're done. So, and then you just say homesick, sick, symlink, and then name. This is a lot harder than it looks, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. Okay, so that's it. And so when I log into this terminal, I should... I 
I now have an actual, like I didn't complain about ZSH, and I actually have systems. So if I, for instance, go into Jim, it actually has OK config, so you can't really tell because there's, there's not much in here. But all of the .config files, all of these point to points in the homesick directory. So say you have about five systems which you have config directories that you really, really customized, and you want them on all your systems. The best way to do this, at least I consider, is homesick. Um, I have about, I actually have a custom, I, have, I had to script my install, installation system because I have about five different things that I have to have implemented before I can actually clone my homesick directory. But it all works very well, and in fact it creates a really nice seamless system. Um, so yeah, if, if you want to version control your dot files, think about using homesick. There's also a back version, which is homesick, um, because I must ask you a question, but um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's not it doesn't require Ruby. It's just a bash script, so it's easy. So yeah, homesick. Dot configs. Yes. Uh, you might have already mentioned this, but how do you install homesick? Gem install homesick. It's a Ruby gem. Yes. Any any other questions? How do I Windows? How do you Windows? You either use Sigwin or Mingua, and then you have Ruby. And then you do all this. Do you need either of those if you are if you have Ruby set up? Like via Ruby for Windows. And you have Git already? Yeah. I don't know. That's that's a very good question. Um I, I think you would because it doesn't like working in normal like in because Windows does folders and directories like differently in terms of like at, like it has the, the slash. Well, it, you, you should be able to handle that in Ruby. Does that support, like, does this support symlinks on Windows? See, that's the thing. I don't know. Okay. I know it supports it inside the Sigwin environment because I've done this stuff inside Sigwin. Um, and I was able to get Vim to recognize all my stuff. It was just really annoying because I, I was doing CRLF conversions and Vim doesn't like those right. um, on Git. So there's, there's quite a few tweaks that you would have to do with Windows, um, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer completely to your question. Well, I mean, also, how much of this is actually valid under Windows? Like, you're not going to have do all of the RSEs and stuff still get referenced in Windows? What do you mean? Because like this is for backing up all of your dot files. Well, yep. how many of these dot files are still actually valuable? These specific ones. Well, if you're running okay. Z shell, then probably it will listen. It should listen to your VimRC. I'm not sure about the other stuff. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff is Unix, Linux only software. Anyway. Yeah. So, Windows is a little bit harder to work with considering it's not it's not Nix compatible completely. But, yeah. Wait, so you can't just dump in any files you want into it? It has to be specific config files? Specific object? Specific, specific config files? Oh no, you can put anything in this. So I can just put in my entire user dir? <laughs> yeah, if you want to do that. You could clone your user directory, all of the stuff in your user directory, How into a homesick repo, and then homesick clone and homesick sing link, and then it will sim link all of your stuff, and your entire user directory will be on GitHub for everybody to see. Yes! <laughs> However, funny. it only actually will sim link things within the home directory of your Git repo and only files starting with your Only those? Yes. It However, does not simply like anything else and it doesn't it comes with it's a little derpy with directories and some directories. I am gonna mention however that that's a very bad idea because sometimes you have Git repos inside of your system. So oh, like, one thing that you can do that's pretty cool is I will just show off mine right now because it's kind of interesting how this works. So I, I, I use Emacs and Vim and the problem is is that a lot of those Emacs uses uh, Git repos for storing some of its stuff, and Vim uses Git uh, repos for storing some of its stuff. And I use other systems, which are also Git repos. So you can actually Git submodule inside your homesick directory. So I have uh, submodules to own my ZSH, Powerline ZSH, and Tmux Powerline, which then get pulled into my system and simulate, and then I reference them in config files. So it actually handles submodules pretty well, which is pretty neat, because then you can reference other Git repos. So yeah. Any other questions? Nope? Okay. That's it then. <laughs>